What is up, humans of the cardboard? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we are doing a quick review of some of the cards that were revealed over the last couple days. Uh, they were revealed one at a time. I didn't think any of them in particular were like worth a single video on their own. But now that we've had like four of them revealed over the last couple days, I will do them all together because I think at this point, we're kind of just set up to get the last 15 or so cards of uh of dimension force revealed all at once because they like to do that kind of saves most of the filler for the end and there might be you know three or four interesting cards there at the end but we'll get there when we get there let's cover this stuff just so we don't have to do it later on and with or with those other cards when they come out and just have to do 20 cards all at once so today we're starting off with ice jade curse so really nice that we're seeing more ice jade stuff the first wave of support seemed interesting they had a rota they have generic water synergy um but it definitely didn't do much and then the second wave actually gave them like a stratos type monster um uh, an actual like decent trap interruption and and you know some other big monsters that are decent um so yeah let's keep it moving uh, this is Ice Jade Curse. It's a continuous spell, and you can only activate the second effect from it once per turn. The first effect reads, while there are an Ice Jade Monster and Ice Jade Depths Ineon Cradle on the field, okay, your opponent cannot activate the effects of monsters they control the turn they were summoned. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's essentially just skill drain for that entire turn like just be, well, at least the first turn and then assuming they don't end on anything substantial you keep them off stuff every turn when they try to summon stuff they can't activate effects not bad um yeah i mean i i say it's pretty good first effect i mean the only downside of it i would say is that you have to have both an ice shade monster and the field spell inion cradle uh on the field at the same time so we do have the stratos monster now and a, uh, a rota to search the stratos so Getting to those is not the hardest thing in the world, but maybe you don't want to go for Indian Cradle. You'd rather be going for the trap, but if you do and you have this card in hand, then this card doesn't get its floodgate effect. So you got to make your choices. Second effect here says when a monster or monsters is destroyed by a battle, oh, excuse me, involving your Ice Jade monster, you can target one of those destroyed monsters and inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. Nothing too crazy here. I mean, just a little extra burn damage. It can be nice, though, theoretically, if you get your opponent low enough to the point where, like, they can't go battle. They can't destroy your Ice Jade monsters by battle because then you just use this effect and dink them for the rest of their life points. So that's not too shabby at all, I think. Um, it's a decent card. I think, like, if you can get it set up, the first effect, if Floodgate effect is, like, nasty enough where, like, that's usually going to be worth. But obviously just depends. Probably not a three of, but still a searchable card in the deck. Uh, so we'll take it. Next up here, we have the new War Rock card. Oh, War Rocks. Woo! <laughs> Fucking hate War Rocks. They're so awful. No, I like their artwork. They just, they're so bad. Anyway, this is War Rock Medium. It's another continuous spell. This card, again, has this hard ones return on the second effect, not the first. The first one reads, while your opponent controls a special summoned monster, period, and you control a level seven or higher war rock monster, neither player can activate the effects of monsters on the field during main phase one. That's really interesting as well. Um, just because like it's not a full lockout and obviously after turn one, which obviously you wouldn't be able to put this on the field during your opponent's turn one, uh, if they're going first, uh, everybody's going to have a main phase too. It means they do they could miss their battle phase because they're not able to, able to do anything prior to trying to go battle phase. So they just have to go straight to main phase two. But still, most competent decks can just like wipe your board and still set up interruptions and just pass without having to go battle phase at all. So whatever, that affects me. But I guess there are matchups where it could come up. And the second effect, during your main phase, you can activate this effect uh you can have special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except warriors um also set one war rock spell or trap directly from your deck to your field except for war rock medium that's pretty cool um i like that it sets so this isn't ashable um too because this is continuous you just get to use this effect every single turn i love that um yeah it's not bad and also the deck has a searching field spell so essentially this card also just gets you any monster in your deck also so even just as far as a searcher like this is actually a pretty good card 
Uh, so we'll take it. Definitely nice consistency boost, but doesn't help with the power. They still need more help to be able to do any powerful plays at all. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we ever get that. Oh my gosh. Oh, so it's, it's been a long day so far. I got up earlier than usual today. Sorry about the yawns. Anyway, moving on, we have Cross Exclusion. This is a new counter trap we got um, earlier this week. This card's actually pretty interesting generically. Um, when your opponent activates a monster effect from the hand, negate that activation. Then if your opponent has any cards in their hand, your opponent discards one card of their choice. Um, um, I mean, like, it's cool. I think, like, it's cool that it's, like, probably a two-for-one. Like, I just think about a lot of situations where this is going to be good. Unfortunately, this doesn't negate and destroy. So, like, if they activate an effect, like, let's say Nibiru. And I know that's not the best example because this wouldn't be alive on turn one to, like, negate a Nibiru. But let's say you got hand-trapped already turn one. You passed. Your opponent wasn't able to play or you hand-trapped them. They pass again. And then when you got to your next turn they try to nib you because you drew a way to play and you activate this because it doesn't destroy it they still have the nib and then they get to pick a card to discard so specifically this is so much better with cards that like other hand like hand traps that discard right they do a hand trap that discards you negate it and now they have to send another card just because they already had to send the hand trap in the first place so just be weary of that if it's a if it's a card that's sending itself from hand to grave as cost that is so much better for this card because you're actually two for one in your opponent um but obviously it depends on the matchup but not a horrible card definitely matchup based but who knows maybe we could end up in a meta game where this card's citable just to punish decks because they just use so many freaking hand effects it's crazy and the last card we have here is another updated card definitely to fall in line with the mako tsunami support from the legendary duelist but also uh just a classic card the amphibian bug roth and that was called amphibious bug roth this is mach 11 i believe the other one was not mach 11 but whatevs um so here we go this guy is a level 5 water machine of course 1850 attack 1500 defense stats are meh and the second effect again Hard once return. The first deck reads, if Umi is not on the field, this card gains 700 attack, but it cannot attack directly. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of weird. It gains 700 if Umi's not on the field. Huh. And the second effect, if Umi is on the field, you can target any non -fa or one face-up non-water monster, destroy that monster. So just like a quick little pop, this card's fine. It does have Umi in its text, so technically it's searchable off of some of the new support uh, in the Legendary Duels, or at least the Fish Sonar card. But I don't think this card does anything nearly impactful enough for it to be relevant. I mean, we have the new Kairu Shin Leviathan, and that card's already like a nasty floodgate, searches the entire archetype, and that's it. But that's pr still pretty good. Like, I don't know why you would ever be going for this guy if you had a search. Uh, over the leviathan in fact i'd rather have a second leviathan instead of a leviathan and this guy because that's just life that's just how it is so all in all the cards are fine this card doesn't really do much i wish it did like if they were going to follow up on umi support it's umi make it good make them good cards uh this card's interesting it's generic but it is very specific on the kind of decks that it really is going to be efficient against uh the warrock card's pretty good i mean it's good for warrocks there's a lot of archetypes that if they got a card like this they would be dancing um so maybe warrocks will actually get a win condition we have all these cards that search us the archetype we just don't have anything for the archetype to do really it's that impactful and the ice jade card also pretty nice like it's a nice floodgate but it does take a little bit of setup so it is what it is it's a win it's another win condition um which is nice so there we go that's all your one-offs that we got over the last couple days i just want to get this out there because i do like making sure i get reviews out to you guys on everything that's dropping um so like i said we are i believe uh exactly a week away like next saturday is when those of you will be getting dimension force and i think we still have 14 or 15 cards yet to be revealed i don't know if we'll get any more one-offs dropped i mean that's how they've been doing it the last couple of weeks aside from the new archetypes therian and uh, the scare claws but uh at some point they'll probably just drop the rest you know 10 to 15 of them just dropped all at once they're like there you go have fun and uh like i said there's usually a gem or two hidden in there and we will just have to wait and see but i think because of the archetypes um that i just named like 
the set's in a good spot. I think the set looks pretty good. I think it actually looks better competitively as, uh, than uh, Battle of Chaos. But we'll obviously see where we go with TCG exclusives and the final reveals and all that stuff. But stay tuned for that. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe if you want. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.